pastor or preacher, I, I am a witness, saith the Lord. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. said, uh, Pastor White doesn't like to be bragged upon, so I'm not going to do that very much. He <laughs> does like you to brag on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nate, if you want to follow, I'm going to be in John chapter 10. My letter is S, as you all know, for Shepherd. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Good Shepherd. Good. I want to start uh, with verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, and by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own, sheep are, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. Yeah. <clears throat> the last verse, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known of mine. Yeah. Um, there's a couple things I wanted to focus on. First off, in verse 9, Jesus said, I am the door. And, and he said that you would you, you could enter in and enter out and find pasture. And that pasture, I believe, Brother, Brother uh, White is the, um, <clears throat> I believe that's the benefits of God. No, you don't got to. Yeah, you can put it down. Um, as a child, uh, myself and my sister Serena and my brothers, I remember in the summertime in morning school, all day long from, from daylight to tonight, um, we would we would play outside. But at times there were things that I needed, and I would have to go in the door and out the door, in the house and out the house. And and the neighbor kids they couldn't follow me, Pastor White. They couldn't go in the door of my house yeah. because they didn't have the relationship with my mom and dad that I. Yeah. 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 There's certain benefits and access that you gain from a relationship. Yeah. I was thinking about the relationship as a child of God. We have certain privileges, and, and he give us certain promises in, in his word. Um, some of those privileges, he gives us salvation and rest and peace and joy and hope. Yeah. We have this because we have a relationship with him. Jesus used the metaphors throughout the Bible referring to this door. Sometimes this door is open. But it's not always going to be open. He said, my spirit will strive with man always. That door sometimes will be closed and shut, never to be opened again. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, he says, And the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things, saith he that is holy, and he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. <clears throat> I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Yeah. Last week, Sister Brenda had a wonderful testimony. If you were here, she talked about the ten virgins. Yeah. In Matthew 25, verse 10, he says, And while they went to buy them, bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. Yeah. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Matthew chapter 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh shall be opened. And the last about doors, Psalms 24, Lift up your hands, O ye gates, even lift them up. Ye everlasting doors, the King of glory shall come in. To access this door, the door of salvation, the only way to enter in is by Jesus, by the name of Jesus. Any other way, he said, was a thief and a robber. Now, verse 12, there's something interesting. There's two words I want you to think about. The first word is hireling. Now, oftentimes, traditionally in, in the Bible, the, the youngest man-child was given the responsibilities to take care of the sheepfold. So once he became older and stronger, Pastor White, he, he would go on to, to plowing and to planting and to farming. And, and those duties of the sheepfold was given to the next youngest man sibling. And, and this cycle repeated itself over and over and over until ultimately the youngest child became the family, the family's permanent uh, uh, shepherd. And well, as we understand, when Samuel came to the house of Jesse, Jesse had eight sons, but only set seven before the prophet Samuel. And he said, are these all thy sons? And he said, nay, but one of thy youngest, David, who was, who was out with the sheepfold, tending to the sheep. Uh, a young shepherd 
I wouldn't say easy because I've never been a shepherd, but uh, it was common for a young shepherd by himself um, to care for as many as 50 sheep in a flock. Okay. But here's the problem, guys. Once once that, that, that flock multiplied to 100 or 150 or more, the family would have to hire a hireling or a helper to assist the shepherd. But the hireling didn't have the same relationship with these sheep. They didn't spend day and night with the sheep like the shepherd did. So he didn't care. In fact, he says the hireling doesn't have the relationship with the sheep like the shepherd does because when danger arises, he flees for his own life. And the shepherd, however, as we see in verse 14, the shepherd is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. Uh -huh. The second word I'd like you to discuss is, is scattered. I'm going to be like Nick. Every service, Nick will say, uh, he has to touch somebody next to you or yeah. look at somebody next to you and say, I want you to look at somebody next to you and say, scatter. Scatter. Thank you, that word scatter. scatter. Why does the Bible say that Jesus would leave the 99 and go after the one that went astray? Okay. Did, did, did he not love the 99? Yeah. He loved them just as much as he loved the one, Pastor White. But the 99, their strength in numbers. The 99, he knew would be okay while he went to, to, to take that one that went astray. I was thinking about a lion. I learned, I learned something interesting this week about a lion while I was studying. A lion will, when it's approaching its prey, let's just for conversation's sake, let's say that it's a, a, a buffalo or bison. It, the lions will approach these buffalo and they will crouch. And they will stalk this prey and they will sit and not move a muscle for sometimes up to two days period of time. Two days. Why would they sit there that long, watching that long? What they're looking for is a weakness, whether it be a small uh, a newborn or whether it be a, a buffalo that maybe had a limp due to injury. It's looking for a weak vessel. Uh -huh. And when they attack in all different directions, chaos comes that breaks out. And, and, and th this group that was once strong is one together. They run every which way, and, and it becomes chaos and confusion. And that's when the lions attack that one weak vessel that becomes isolated. What the devil wants is for us to become isolated. He wants to isolate us from God's word and isolate, like, isolate us from prayer, isolate us from our church, separate us from our church family and from our pastor. Will put us in a wicked and susceptible state to being devoured. Yeah. Don't tell me the devil's not seeking whom he may devour. When you read on the news about a 63-year-old man that's not had so much as a parking ticket, and he's gunning down hundreds of innocent people from his hotel room. Yeah. The devil's seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. <clears throat> so in this isolation, it will put us in a weakened state. And the good shepherd, though, he wants to bring us into the fold uh -huh. and, 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 and make us to where we are not isolated. In history, a shepherd will take a lamb that continuously leaves the, the fold continuously wanders out unto its own into danger, and he will literally break its legs and carry it around. Now that sounds mean, it sounds horrible, but what? But what the reason he does this is once he carries that sheep around, it becomes so dependent upon him that after it, it heals, it never leaves his side. It always wants to be in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm not saying that God wants to break your legs. <laughs> But he is a good shepherd. He is a door. He wants us to depend upon him. Yes, he does. Amen. He is our keeper. He is our provider. And we must learn to trust in him. Just as Jesus is a good shepherd, pastors are also shepherds that tend to the flock. Without pastors, who would teach the truth to us and expound us the word? Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 4 says, And I will set up shepherds over them, and they will fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, and I love this verse, Pastor White. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you knowledge yeah. and understanding. Yeah. In closing, I was thinking about Moses in the book of Exodus and how he was trying to judge and rule over every matter, even the most insignificant, small, petty matters. Uh -huh. And I, I, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was his father-in-law. He gives him advice. He said, this, this thing is not a good thing that you're doing. He's seeing that he was, he's overwhelmed. And he says, this is, the, this is the advice he gave them in Exodus 18 and 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. I thank God that Pastor White is dedicated to each and every one of this congregation. Yeah. He wants us to reach our full potential and attain of what God has willed for our lives. I appreciate and love him for his service, and I thank the Good Shepherd for giving us Air Shepherd. Yeah. Yeah.